people know about Willow Creek Community Church, it's usually because of one of three things. One, bringing arts into the church. Two, training pastors all over the world. And three, creating seeker services. Because of the commitment to creativity, for the last 18 months, Willow has been running a separate experimental community called The Practice. We do a separate service Sunday nights in a smaller chapel on the Willow campus. And our small staff team has been given a ton of freedom to explore and ask new questions. My name is Aaron Nequist, and I'm giving leadership to this experimental community called The Practice at Willow Creek. When you look at Ephesians 4, Paul says the church exists to equip the saints for ministry. And yet in the last few years, we've just been getting this sense we're not creating disciples to the extent we wish we were. You know, with Dallas's teachings of the church is to make disciples and disciples are to help remake the world, um, we're trying to say, all right, how do we actually do that? Just telling people, you should be a disciple, you should help remake the world, um, is maybe inspirational, um, but it doesn't actually help people to do it. So we're, we're, we're trying to say, all right, what are the practices that we can do to become the kinds of people who can put Jesus' words into practice. Today, our leadership team is planning an upcoming service. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. What we'd love to do in the next few minutes is begin to flesh out this month of June. We were talking yesterday about having an intentional framing that allows us to develop discernment in our community. Yeah. Yeah. You imagine if a person in our community is like, oh, I'm really frustrated with my job, and I'm thinking about leaving, yeah. and I'm in a small group, yeah. and I've asked them to pray about it, but what's yeah. that actual next yep. embodied step to yeah. say, right. how do we discern together? Listening and discerning. Sundays in evangelical churches often tend to be like a rally. And a rally has a really, really important place. But just rally after rally after rally doesn't actually change people. We realize that people knew what they should do, but they didn't know how. Let's talk about June 7th. What is the way that we can structure our time together to set up this whole month? I just keep thinking, with the best intentions, discernment doesn't happen unless you're stopping, unless you're listening. Oh. Maybe there's a practice that we teach every week in June yeah. that is the, the means to which we get to the discernment practice. Yeah. Just sing this with me. Be thou my vision. Be thou my There are a number of framing ideas and kind of uh, guideposts for the gathering. One is we never want a speaker to, to lecture more than 10 or 12 minutes. And um, this is really important to us. Um, first, is there's a subtle teaching when someone talks for a certain amount of time that the most important thing is what is in their head. And um, we don't want that to be true. Um, but the other thing is when the teaching remains short and the teaching is teaching to a practice, the teaching becomes a launching point rather than an ends in itself. Discernment begins with the question, as between these two things, which is of God and which is not of God? 
The speaker will lead us to a practice. So one night it'll be centering prayer. We'll give a little background about centering prayer and where it came from, give some of the guidelines of centering prayer. And then there's always the moment where they say, all right, now let's practice. And then we'll spend 20, 25 minutes having a first experience with whether it's centering prayer or Lexio Divina or listening or you know, any number of practices. In terms of how to, tonight we're gonna learn the first step in the discernment process and Aaron's gonna lead us. We wanna do it in the way of Jesus. Not my will, but yours be done. It is the prayer that says, God, please help me to be indifferent to anything but your will. This is a very, very difficult prayer. If you kind of wish you hadn't come tonight, I don't blame you. What we'd love to do is practice this prayer with something that you're wrestling with. Pray with your pen. Just say, God, this is what I most deeply desire. This is what's burning inside me. This is, this is what I will for this situation. God, this is it. How do we help people practice Jesus' words? How do we help them live the kinds of lives that Jesus made them to live? Would you stand, please? <clears throat> Loving God, in the name of Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I ask for wisdom. God, we lay before you our deepest desires, our strongest emotions, and clearest requests. In the name of the Father, we pray. Please help me to be indifferent to anything but your will. And then that practice leads us to the communion table. Sunday pours into the rest of the week. We want to say, hey, you are a second grade teacher. How can what we do when we're gathered together on Sunday help you love and serve and bless your second graders every day? May the practices we do here be practices you can do all week in a way that you can serve the world.